So yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to introduce uh, Nev Hyman, uh, the founder of Nev House, who I had the opportunity to work with some years ago and discover this extraordinary uh, project that he created to create um, housing that could be assembled in a very short period of time that had a category five cyclone rating. Uh, and it was a, a, an emergency response strategy and technology for vulnerable territories, particularly in the South Pacific, which is where uh, Nev was initially uh, working, um, to, for those communities to be more, uh, more response ready. Uh, so with no further ado, I'd like to hand the floor over to you, Nev, to share your wisdom and, uh, and journey um, of Nev House. Sure. Thanks, Brett. Uh, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. Uh, yeah, we, we had a bit of fun together. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to share with you what I've been working on for quite a long time now. Um, and I do have a document to share. So, Brett, am I sharing that um, on my share screen? You're sharing the screen with me or vice versa? Or no, what? You, no it it's, the, it's enabled for sharing. So you can just share your screen. and, uh, and All right. So just go well, for it. Um, so you'll you know, have to I'll, click share screen when you're ready. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, you know, obviously I'm really interested in what this platform is all about. And of course, the, the general topic of the whole event. But, um, you know, the uh, we all know that the, uh, the future is, you know, blockchain and digital this and digital that. So I don't need to elaborate on that. You're the experts in that. But as from a um, an entrepreneur's perspective who's been... Um, uh, talking to governments and talking to individuals and all over the world um, to deal with a problem that is um, very much still alive and well, even though COVID took the, the attention away from a plastic in the environment. Um, it's, uh, there's still a lot of interest and, well, there should be, obviously. And with uh, COP26 and the, the need to sequester carbon and carbon credits and all those sorts of things, it's uh, put our company into a very strong position to be able to deliver a result that is unique. And I'll explain why it's unique. Um, and really, it, um, generally speaking, the, the result, the, the solution is architecture and uh, dealing with waste in the environment. So we put pulling those two solutions together and um, I've got a background in surfing, obviously. You can see the surf was behind me. Um, and I've had an understanding of, of the chemistry in plastics uh, for a long time, not as a, a chemical engineer, but just as someone who's practically used these um, elements for my whole career, but even more so over the last six or seven years working with key people. Um, I see Adrian there, Adrian Keat. <laughs> We've had discussions about this, but um, so um, let me share screen and, um, and obviously I'd like to um, put the floor open to questions after. Um, and just briefly, Brett, how long have I got? <laughs> because I didn't. Uh, you've got, you now have just shy of just over 25 minutes. Thanks okay, much. fine. Yeah, well, this should only take about 10 or 15 minutes to discuss and then I'd love to get a bit of a, a conversation going because there's obviously plenty of smart people in the room from around the world. and. Um, uh, the planet is looking for solutions and my company is looking for solutions. So let's, and uh, you know, if there's a solution in the digital blockchain world, let's, uh, let's bring it on. So I'll just share the screen and um, bring up my document. I'll share this now. And there we go, make it full screen. Slow as a wet week. Um, okay, so I'm over on the left here or up there somewhere. Okay, so um, CRPP is stands for Composite Recycled Plastic Panels, um, which or CRAP for short, if you have a sense of humour. Um, this is all about repurposing by redesign, and I stole that phrase from BASF who um, initiated a program a few years ago to um, encourage companies around the world uh, to repurpose plastic by redesigning. 
Now, they've taken that stance, $1.4 billion to fund companies around the world, because they made the comment very vocally and globally that we, over the next um, five years, there's going to be a 40% increase in plastic production. And that, was, that comment was made two years ago. So plastic's coming at us, whether we like it or not, whether we reduce as much as we can, which the world has been doing for the last two or three years with single-use plastics, which is wonderful, but it is not solving the problem. Solving the problem using incineration is not solving the problem. Solving the problem of putting uh, low-grade plastic waste into road base, maybe, it has potential, but the, the jury's out on microplastics coming from that. I think the best solution for the use of low-grade plastic waste, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute, is that it's used in the largest industry in the world, which is housing. And the biggest need is housing because everybody needs a home. Everybody needs dignity. And, of course, I don't need to elaborate on that, um, but that's the background to this. So um, uh, where is my drop-down thing? It's hidden by all this gear at the top. Um, here it is. So I've also stolen this marketing angle from uh, Steve Jobs. We need to think different. Um, that there was plastic waste going to China before the China sword came up in 2018. Um, that's what was happening to most of the uh, municipal MSW waste. Uh, it was being shipped offshore, as we all know. Um, we have to act now. Again, I don't need to elaborate on this. We know the problem. The problem that of plastic in the oceans is, uh, is not solved by putting a giant sieve in the ocean. And I say that respectfully, but I say that with a, a hint of frustration because when Boyan Slats was given $30 million by Silicon Valley, that money was given to science for him to build this sieve in the ocean. Yes, it's working, but the problem's already there. I would, I would almost say too late. What we should be doing is putting that money into stopping the plastic going in the ocean in the first place. Uh, Boyan is spending money now building boats to go down the rivers to clean up the plastic waste that's floating in the rivers before it goes out. Wonderful, great idea, but we have to stop it at the source. And where is the source? It's not necessarily off the coast of Australia or California. It's the riverbeds up in the mountains in Indonesia and Malaysia and everywhere else around the world, and it washes down in the monsoon season and goes out into the ocean. It's that simple. So how do we solve the problem? Whoops. We, we can take pretty much that waste and we can turn it into shelter. We can turn it into clinics, houses, school classrooms, etc. This is a structure that we built in Vanuatu. We delivered 15 Category 5 rated structures. Um, and there's a caveat on that. These panels are actually made from wood plastic composite, which takes one polymer out of the environment. Um, the frame of the house is Category 5 rated. The, the, the um, footings are Category 5 rated, but the panels would not withstand uh, 320 kilometre hour winds for, um, of flying coconuts and things like that. However, they're still far better than, than what's, what's actually there in, in how they live. But uh, recently, we've achieved full Category 5 rating for ballistic testing, which I'll explain again in a second. We can take that waste. That's in Indonesia, but it could be anywhere. We can take that waste as it is and create these products, which are samples of the different ways of creating product from low-grade plastic waste. And what I mean by low-grade plastic waste is contaminated, commingled, multi-polymer waste, which is what you see on the left. You can see then the two outside samples, there's coconut in one and bamboo in the other, which means that we can put organic material within the mold that creates these things. The one in the middle is the um, plastics that have been ground, shredded and pulverized. And all the color that you see are the plastics that hasn't melted. 
So I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. I'll explain what that actually means. The architecture side of what we can do, we can take our facade panel system and create any architecture. We've built some of these homes and some of these homes we have not built. It just goes to show that the architecture can vary according to what we need, where we need it. The structure on the left is the classic NEV house. I call everything NEV because I've been in the surfboard industry all my life and I've used my name as my brand in everything that I've done. So whether you like it or not, that's the way it is. It's NEV house, it's NEV surfboards, it's all this other stuff. Um, so NEV house itself is made from um, three main components. The footings, which go into the ground, so we don't use concrete at all in a NEV house. The footings can withstand five to 10 ton of uplift, so the house cannot be pulled out of the ground. Um, the frame of the house, you can see the frame from the top, they're portal frames, and they get tied into the, the actual footing, goes around the top, down into the other side, and then that whole frame is held together by the panel system that goes in between. We've recently completed a um, final panel testing by an Indigenous Australian engineering group that have brilliantly designed this panel system that um, withstands 320 kilometer hour winds. So we've done testing now with certification of a two by four in a cannon shot out at 320 kilometers an hour, an hour or a second or whatever it is, not an hour, <laughs> that'd be really slow. Um, the straight into this panel and it literally bounces off. So we have, a, we have achieved a category five rated structure that it can be rapidly deployed in um, anywhere um, that is low on maintenance, which as you know, in developing nations, maintenance is a big problem. Um, and uh, can withstand earthquakes and all of the above. We have contracts on the table, not signed off on yet, to deliver category five rated structures in the northwest of Western Australia on an island that's just been, um, it's been purchased from Rio Tinto and it's being turned back into a, a, um, an iron ore mine. And they want a community there for the workers that is more eco-friendly. And, and we are the only people they're looking at to deliver that solution for them. So, um, post disaster relief, uh, you know, I was invited to go to Tacloban nine months after the hurricane hit there um, by the uh, Romaldo Romaldez family. That's actually Hamelda Romaldez. Um, and to provide a solution, it was a little bit early for us, but the point being is that we could deploy, say, a thousand NEV houses in two weeks and we could. Have give some dignity and safety to those people. Um, I could probably spend 10, 10 or 15 minutes or so talking about that, but I know time's going to run out. So I won't elaborate on that, but imagine warehouses around the world that have, a, let's just say, a thousand NEV houses in them. Let's just say the basic house costs $10,000 each. That's $10 million for governments to have um, post disaster, refugee, crisis recovery situations that can be rapidly de deployed, built on site, and then if necessary, um, dismantled and moved to another area or put back in the warehouse for the next disaster. Uh, <clears throat> we have delivered in Vanuatu where we delivered these structures. Um, the three classrooms in the middle there, the black and white photos, they were, they were built in five days. It rained every day for the month of April and it was next night of impossible to do what we did and we pulled it off, completely off the grid in the most remarkable area or place you've ever seen. Um, it's quite primitive and I say that with respect to the locals um, and we use local labour to build these structures. It was an amazing experience. Since then, sadly, we haven't had the, the um, support to have actually delivered this in volume globally for a bunch of reasons, but we're ready to do that now. We've won the Good Design Awards in Australia for the actual facade panel of the house. 
Now, the facade panel um, is a, a panel that can be used for the floor, walls and roof of a house. So let me just quickly go back to these panels here. You see how they have horizontal lines. Um, those uh, stick out about 60 millimetres from the wall of the house. And that basically shades, takes the, the uh, tropical heat off the face of the wall of the house on a single skin house. It also is structurally sound to, um, to protect from, rat, from flying debris. And when you flip it upside down, it becomes the floor panel, like an atami mat scenario in between a frame. And then if you put it on the roof, it becomes just like color bond on the roof. Um, so that's why we won the, the awards for that. Repurpose unsorted, unclean plastic waste into shelter. So everything you see there, um, most recyclers can't do anything with, or they have to up in the top left-hand corner. Yes, most of those are clean plastics, HDPE um, and PP and, and, and PET, that the main recyclable plastics that have value, even to this day, still have value. But all the other stuff you see is generally going to landfill, especially in the, the, the um, ocean waste you see there, which is a rarity. What you see there is not what the Pacific gyres are. That was pretty much after a cyclone and waste washed off and it collects. But um, anyway, that's, I'm getting off on a tangent there. What you see down in the bottom right-hand corner is the work of uh, Four Ocean. As we all know about Four Ocean doing a fantastic job. They've collected here in Bali 30 tonne of plastic waste. They have sorted it all and they're trying to figure out what to do with all those different polymers, all contaminated. They can do certain things, but they ask me, what can we do with this waste? I'm sitting on bags of unsorted plastic waste. That's what I want. Um, I took the guy who showed me, showed me around the factory, an Indonesian guy, outside and asked him, okay, it's wonderful what you're doing by collecting this off the beaches, but I'll give you, I'll pay you to collect the plastic waste that's blowing around in the wind in the paddock next door. I went up to a landfill in Ulbud and found out that they get paid 2,200 rupees for unsorted plastic waste direct from the landfill, the pumulon, the scavengers. And where did my thing just go? That's weird. Um, what <laughs> island is that? That was an incredible island. Yeah, oh, that's Catalina in, um, uh, in off the coast of California. <laughs> that's... <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I don't know why that disappeared. But anyway, so what I'm getting to here is that the pickers, the lowest of the low for clear, for pl the plastic recycling start scenario that are doing the best job, they get 4,400 rupee to um, sort that plastic waste whilst they leave on the landfill a lot, a lot of the plastic waste I want. I said to them, I'll pay you 5,000 rupee, which is equivalent of about... Um, if they fill a 10 kilo bag, about three to four dollars US, which will feed a, a, um, a family in, in Bali for a day or two. So every high tide, Indonesians should, and Malaysian, and everyone in any environment where what plastic waste washes up on the beach, people should be fighting over that to collect that, to take it to what I call is going to be called a NEV Pop House, which stands for Plastic Offset Program. And there will be a, a shredder and a grinder in each one of these small uh, facilities. That waste plastic will be shredded, pl soft plastics and ground hard plastics, and put into a silo, which we will then um, turn into our, our panel systems. So paying um, locals in villages to collect the plastic waste is the solution to stop it from going into the rivers. It's a no-brainer. Um, what do we do with it? CRPP, composite recycled plastics, use all seven codes of plastic polymers. The little pile on the left is all the plastic that was sent to a, a materials recovery facility in Kentucky where our, our, um, our partners are. And unwashed, unsorted plastic was then shredded and ground and tested. 80% of it was polyethylene and polypropylene, which is the safe everyday plastics. And the balance was other nasties, whether it be PVC, whether it be styrenes and all the other things, thermosets, et cetera, could be a dead dog in there for all, for all we care. 
the, bottom, the, the situation is, is that the bottom 20% is a percentage of a percentage of nasties. So in our mix, it's so heavily diluted, it's not a problem. Then we've got agricultural films. We can use that. We can use e-waste. We can use EPS, um, a normal PET and HDP, HDPE. So this is what we use inside the panels. How do, what, what is the system? It's a clamshell mold. It's not extrusion. We line both surfaces of the clamshell mold with three to four millimeters of either virgin plastic, single recycled plastic, or preferably um, a bioplastic made from lignin. There's a company in Germany called Technaro that has got over 3,000, maybe 4,000 recipes for lignin-based plastics, which is where the original plastic came from. The original plastic was some guy was playing pool, saw he, the balls were made out of ivory and decided to make plastic out of lignin, out of rice husks and sugarcane and all that sort of stuff. Now, uh, in time, it became fossil fuels, which is why we have the problem. So the surface mould is low on or zero VOCs and off-gassing because it's a natural polymer. We, that we line the, the surface of the mould can be textured like timber, can be textured like any different um, um, uh, profile, and it can be any colour or, or so. We close the mould with the ground and pulverised plastic particles. And as you see on the left-hand side, um, you can see the particles on the finish of our product. Now, we can have the finish look like a rendered finish or a timber finish or, uh, or whatever it might be, but you can see the colours, and that's what I was saying before. That is unmelted plastic. When you speak to some recyclers of plastic who actually make plastic bricks and things like that, they create a molasses of the plastic using friction. Not, not melting all of the plastics and make a kind of a molasses and push it into a mold. Now that's, from my, from my perspective, quite dangerous because what's in the middle is what's on the outside and vice versa. So VOCs and off-gassing can occur with that type of recycling of plastic. So those bricks must be lined. Our panels do not need to be lined. It's X factory straight up on the wall, finished. Um, the process can, uh, we can use other things like fly ash. There's a company in, in Germany that has removed the nasties out of fly ash and mixed it with polymer, and we can mix that in. So we have all these solutions for fire retardancy. With our surfacing polymer, we can put in uh, fire retardant, we can put in um, antimicrobial, anti insect. The company there is called um, Symphony Environmental who actually have been doing this for 30 years. It's all natural additives. Um, it, we don't have to make panelling for housing. We can make all sorts of other products. I'll give you a prime example. I was in Tennessee a couple of years ago and met with Clayton Homes, which is owned by Warren Buffett. They're the largest modular home builder in the US doing about 50,000 houses a year. I met with them, showed, told, told them about Nev House and my bigger picture, and they said, look, Mr. Hyman, we're not actually interested in flat pack houses. We love what you're doing, but we're not interested in that. But when I show them the sample, which is, was here, I think, and 12 millimetres thick, a piece of board that had a higher content of timber in it, they said, can you make an 8 by 4 sheet of that? And I said, yes, we can. And he said, we need 4 million sheets a year just to meet their demand. So you can see hoarding boards, um, other types of uh, water uh, mitigation issues um, through to whatever, roof tiles, etc. Home, everybody needs one and a cleaner planet. That's my mantra. That's what I want to do. I want to turn waste plastic into shelter. But at the end of the day, it's products doing other things and so be it. I probably left out a whole bunch of stuff and I've probably chewed up most of my time, but I think I would rather leave the floor open to some questions. But I would like to see what you're doing, Brett, with unit, et cetera, to see how we can get this show on the road. Just, just so you know, Nev House has discussions in the US with regard to building our CRPP plants. We've designed the plant, just one last point. 
We've designed our plants to be modular. Um, the world is decentralizing as far as um, industry. So we want our plant to be able to be scaled globally so we can have little plants in little towns and villages all over the world. And if we have to build a plant in a large city, we just scale up the modularity of that plant. And we're ready to go with that. And we're negotiating with the company in the US right now. So I think, um, I mean, we don't, we just with the small amount of time that we have left, um, and obviously, mm -hmm. you know, there's a incredible body of knowledge and intellectual property and capacity and trial and testing. Um, and you've learned, you've done it from the ground up and you've learned the hard way, um, you know, with a whole lot of uh, things. Where, where is the enterprise at right now? And what's the what's on the horizon? The first thing that you what's your first target? Your low hanging fruit. Yeah. Okay. So um, under new management, and Brett, you will understand that. <laughs> um, I've got an incredible new CEO uh, who's strategizing me because I'm the bigger thinker. So we've we've uh, um, we fine tuned the company to deliver Nev House right now using third party manufacturers but not using CRPP because that will come when we have our first plant operational. But right now we are negotiating contracts, as I said, in the Northwest of Western Australia for this island called Cockatoo Island. Um, that's quite exciting. We're also negotiating with people up in the Whitsundays to build Nev houses as eco cabins uh, to withstand category five cyclones, which is a huge problem up there. And we're also, you know, I'm, I'm meant to be going down to, Central Coast to go meet with um, a guy who owns three golf courses and he wants to put Nev House cabins in amongst the trees to um, have out as Airbnb um, on the golf course. So there's, a, there's huge potential for um, Nev House uh, in a commercial sense for eco cabins. And then we're negotiating uh, with uh, indigenous communities because Nev House is actually called Nev Ganya, which is indigenous for house for the selling of Nev houses. So that's all going nicely. Um, we're still low on capital uh, where, because it's been a long road to get here. Um, as far as CRPP is concerned, uh, we have had cons uh, constant discussions with um, three or four counties in Tennessee, uh, one of the largest county um, around Nashville. And in Tennessee, they have to close their landfills or many of the landfills. Um, by June next year. And so the local counties are really struggling for solutions. Whereas we have a solution because our partners in the US take garbage and turn it into fuel cells. So it's a unique technology and we can li literally stop waste going to landfill. This one particular facility that we want to get operating in um, uh, Scott County in Tennessee will do uh, 2,000 tonne a day of waste. And out of that, we will take our plastic waste. So we're very close to signing contracts, very close. Um, we've also set up a fund in the US called the NEB Earth Opportunity Zone Fund. That's established, ready to take, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, uh, capital that has been, that should be capital gain. They, should, they need to pay capital gain instead of paying the capital gain on the tax, they, will, they can invest in opportunity zones around the US. We're ready to go with that too. So capital can go into these, this fund and we can move forward with that. And there's a few other discussions going globally to keep us on track. So I've just created a, a breakout room. Um, so I know that you know, Iwan um, was very active in the chat and had some questions and was very curious. And we've uh, run out of time on this session because we're about to mm. meet um, Elliot Connor and to discover the great work that he's doing. Uh, Elliot, I trust that you're there. Uh, so uh, Nev and uh, Iwan, if you guys, and possibly Vanessa as well, if you want to participate in that conversation at all, uh, if you guys would like to jump over uh, into that breakout room, so you'll see at the bottom of your screen, you can just click on breakout room. Uh, and then that will give, uh, Iwan, that'll give you the opportunity to have a deeper conversation with Nev and, and, um, and that'll allow me to introduce Mr. Connor. Sure. So thank you Thanks, very Brett. much. Thank there. you, everybody. Let's keep chatting. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. See you. Okay. Great. See you.